barbershop conversation, guys. So I want to give you guys a ringside perspective of what of what went down last night. Uh, heard Lara was coming off the heels of Nigel and Caleb, and <laughs> I don't want to butcher his last name. You know, my tub tire. And uh, uh, I was sitting. The teams, uh, Nigel's team was sitting behind the media section, so. That adrenaline was pumping. Those guys uh, stay standing and yelling. They they chant their songs the whole entire fight. I'm sure you guys heard it on the on the um. I'm sure you guys heard it on TV if you could. And the next fight was Hurd or and I was sitting behind uh uh Herd Squad. And if you guys seen my video, if you haven't seen my video about Herd's team reaction go check out that video and that will give you an indication of what I was enduring. And I say that positively. I know they're young, ambitious. They have a kid that the whole city believes in, the whole community believes in, and he's fighting to be the unified, undefeated, unified, not undisputed, unified 154, uh, arguably the best fight at 154. You guys know how I feel about belts. If you have the most belts, you are the number one guy in that division, like Keith Thurman. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, Anthony Joshua, you know, I, I believe uh, Deontay Wilder is going to beat him. But just for the sake of conversation and how we value belts, you know, in terms of undisputed unified champion, we have to pay homage to the guy who has the most belts. And um, so that fight was intense the whole way through. Uh, it was back and forth. I, I, I thought... Uh, uh, more than more than Laura, I thought her dictated the tempo of the fight. I thought her was the 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 aggre- excuse me the aggressor of of the two. I thought uh, Laura was pinpoint precise with his left hand the first four rounds, uh, and 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 started degressing in terms of activity, uh, and he he fell into a shell a bit. He couldn't get out of Herd's way. I thought Laura was very professional in the ring. Uh, he understood Laura drops his jab hand a lot. He understands, uh, foot placement. He understands, uh, reaction time. I mean, he's just a ring generalship. If, re- if you rewatch the fight looking for certain things, you'll see it. I-, I didn't do it exactly the whole fight, but I was looking at their feet positioning because, you know, one is right-handed, one is left-handed. And every time his feet got in position, he threw that left hand. Uh, a lot of times he didn't need the jab. Uh, to gain the momentum, you know, because we are robotic and sometimes fighters can't throw their power hand without throwing their jab, you know what I mean? Because they, they become that habit. They become that robotic. Uh, I thought we saw the best lar that we can remember. I thought we saw the most uh, fan-friendly Laura I believe we've ever seen, uh, especially in the last five fights. I mean, I would say the last four years, I would say. Um, very impressed, very courageous. Uh, I had the scorecards a little wider. Uh, I would say uh, Heard won by three points. Uh, just because of the activity. Like, his shots were cleaner uh, at, at, at points in the fight, uh, Laura. But I think the effective aggression is why he got the knockdown in the 12th round. See, aggression pays off late. It's like uh, passing the ball in the shack the first half and getting uh, uh, who would who was it? Hakeem Elijah one, David Robinson, Pat Ewing, getting them three fouls in the first half. They can't play defense in the second half. And I thought uh, even though he was hitting a lot of the elbows the first four rounds, uh, he was very compact, very tight in terms of his shell defense. Uh, uh, speaking of Lar. The reason why he got the knockdown was because of uh, him just touching him consistently the first four rounds when uh, Lar was at his best. And uh, I think the judges fell in love with the accuracy of Lara because when he landed, it was it was pretty flush, especially the left hand. But I thought the aggression of Law uh, of Hurd, uh, even when he didn't land, was taking a toll on Lara, and and you saw his face busted up. Uh, Laura was a gentleman. Laura was a Laura was a championship fighter, and um, for Laura 
to crawl out of hell. He had moments in that fight looking at his face. He looked discouraged. Uh, um, not discouraged in terms of giving up, but he was like, damn, this guy keeps on hitting me. I'm the best defensive guy at 154. This guy shouldn't be touching me that much. But but I just genuinely believe that uh, Hurd's power, his fortitude. Uh, Hurd is not going to get credit for his fortitude. Hurd's fortitude. He doesn't have the experience to parry with his right hand. Parry with your right hand and shoot the right off the parry. You understand what I'm saying? So you catch the left hand, you deflect it outside the shoulder, and you shoot that right hand straight through the shot, and you land. You understand what I'm saying? He de- he doesn't have that experience. You know, Floyd Mayweather has that experience. Uh, a Shane Mosley would have that experience. You understand what I'm saying? So um, I-, I give her credit because he knew he had to get hit to get his off. He don't. He he he's not built that way. He's not. Uh, I'm 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 not one for breaking down Jamel Charlo's fight yet. Jamel Charlo has to get through his June ninth fight, and I know who he's fighting. I'll let them announce it. Uh, just as I will let uh Oscar De La Hoya will have to see me really really soon. Uh, it it, it looks like May. So uh, I have all these fight dates, man. I I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, so uh. Um, so as I digress, I just got off track because I was thinking about grilling. I, I'm going to grill Golden Boy. Grill, grill, grill them. Uh, for I'll just tell you guys, Jojo, you guys know this already. Jojo Diaz, I told you guys a month and a half ago that this was going to be on the, on the undercard of Keith Thurman. But now they're moving it to potentially Gary Russell's hometown. We'll see how that works out. Sometime in May, they're trying to, you know, they, they got to work with the dates, with the availability. I have a date um that they might have and uh so it it should be exciting and uh, i pray that my schedule permits me to go because i didn't have that date on my calendar i had may 19th on my calendar i didn't have the other date but barclay would be too big for a gary russell jojo diaz fight obviously right so they're trying to find a smaller venue in gary russell's hometown hopefully they can bring that fight to la if they bring that fight to la i'm going off you talk about excited i'm going to cover that fight from tuesday to saturday night Everything, and if I, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna hire a babysitter because I, I, I genuinely believe, uh, 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 exposing, uh, the racial divide in boxing is that important for the culture as me as a black man, and, and I think that since I have access, uh, I'm fortunate enough that God and my team and my, uh, my relationships has granted me the opportunity to have that type of access and not have to worry about. Uh, my questions as a not have to worry about not being me you understand what I'm saying and I absolutely love it and uh, I can't wait and uh, as I digress back into the ringside breakdown I just I'm just getting excited about I'm getting I'm getting totally excited about that man I despise Oscar despise him despise him man and uh uh but I thought her effective aggression was the key to the fight and and not getting deterred when Laura shelled up and he wasn't hitting them flush. You now keep in mind, remember he was throwing them hooks, them ugly hooks. You know, he wasn't bending his knees and digging. The reason why his face looked like that and he was able to throw that hook and land that hook in the first and the twelfth round was because of remember he was hitting them on the elbows, hitting them on the waist, he was he was, you know, he was deflecting a lot of his shots. But throughout the fight, you know, if your arms go down two inches, that's two inches of reaction time you have to make up for. And if you're tired, you can't make up that reaction time. See, there's so many intricacies in boxing that we just see who lands the most punches because we get caught up in the fight. But the arms start to drop, you know what I mean, from fatigue, from catching the punches and stuff like that. You, you know what I mean? And, and instead of parrying, you, you just turn your... Turn your uh, turn your gloves flat to catch it because you know you cover more uh when you turn your palms in you can protect yourself a little bit more you know it 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 creates a bigger force field as opposed to in a typical fighting stance you understand what i'm saying so at the end of the day i thought heard won the fight by three points it was definitely a bigger fight uh he landed more he threw more he walked forward more uh Laura was reactionary the second half of the fight. 
And uh, I, I just think it was absolutely an astounding, I, I say astounding, I say astounding because that's like Kobe Bryant beating, beating Michael Jordan in the game best out of seven one-on-one. You know he has a chance to be better than him, but not at that moment. You understand what I'm saying? Jordan at 33, Kobe Bryant at 18. You don't expect Kobe Bryant to beat him in the best out of seven series of a game of one-on-one. But he has a chance, though, right? His his long youthfulness, you understand, may take him to a game seven and his legs might get tired. You understand, he might just get tired of getting back down because Kobe's a little bit longer, a little bit taller. You understand what I'm saying? So little things like that paid a big part. And congratulations to her, you know, uh, it honestly, it it felt really good to look behind me and see a black uh a sea of black contingent fans supporting their fighter. I see that Mexican fights all the time. I'm not being disrespectful. Latin fights, I see it. But when I turned over my left shoulder because I was in the far right, when I turned over my left shoulder and I saw Herd's team jumping up and down, it made me feel good. You know, I saw the brotherhood. I saw the love. I saw a unified front to protect, preserve, and root for Jared Hurd. And I'm sure the same thing was on the other side with Laura. I just wasn't sitting over there. And so it, it was a great card. Showtime did a hell of a job. Al Heyman deserves uh, two thumbs up, as my son would say. It was just a beautiful thing. So anyways, barbershop conversations, man. That That's what it felt like ringside. Uh, it felt like a bigger crowd because I was in the epic center of both James Nigel's uh, UK fans and uh, uh, Jared Hurd. So it, it, overall, it was a great night. I hustled my ass off trying to get these interviews. I thank you guys for thanking me. And uh, I thank you guys for inspiring me and encouraging me. Because if y'all motherfuckers wasn't watching, I would still do the job. But my enthusiasm would be up and down, up and down, up and down. Because... Uh, you only can hit your head against the wall so many times before the wall breaks or your forehead cracks in the blood and you don't want to see the blood anymore. So something has to give and you guys have supported me and I, there's no time soon where this shit is going to give. So I appreciate you guys, man. Beautiful thing. Beautiful fight. Great energy. Everybody showed up and uh, I look forward to uh, bringing you guys some more content this week. Have a Have a great Sunday. Enjoy church. Enjoy NBA. I think they're jockeying for positions today on ESPN or ABC, whatever the case may be. I'm going to bed. I'm tired as hell. I haven't. You guys know I haven't slept. I don't get a hotel room Saturday night, so I haven't slept. So hopefully I can get four hours of sleep right now. Four, yeah, four hours of sleep and then start my day. Maybe I can do some work on the properties, you know, whatever. Go go rake the leaves or something like that. Just show my presence so, so they know that it's a mom and pop establishment. It's not no 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 guy that has a silver spoon in his mouth you know the tenants respect that a great deal so anyways man barbershop conversation man i appreciate you guys thank you and uh, follow me on instagram guys follow me on instagram i'm growing on instagram and that's the reason why i want you guys to follow me on instagram yes i want more followers i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say that doesn't make me feel good it doesn't validate me it makes me feel good it makes me smile but I love engaging with you guys. I love, if you guys hit me, I love responding to you guys. And that's the easiest way because if you guys know my channel now, it's just impossible for me to get to the comments. It's, it's impossible. I got too many, I have too many videos. And I think I have over 3,000 videos. So it's just literally impossible for me to get to the, for me to get to the comments. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, and, and I, honestly, sometimes I don't even look at the comments of the videos because I'm so forward thinking that I forget that I did that video. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, so I, I genuinely forget sometimes to look at the video. But you guys are special. You guys are genuinely amazing. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Oscar. I'll do a separate video so I can title it so you guys have a, uh, have a landmark where you guys can go. And uh, I, I I can't wait to get his ass. I, I can't wait. I have no respect for Oscar. I can't wait to get him Bernard Hopkins. I haven't looked at the, the house schedule yet. So I don't know. I know the date, but they haven't booked it yet. And uh, they may have to move it back because, I mean, five weeks to promote that fight, I don't think is, I gave you guys a date. I don't think that's, I don't think that's enough time. So um, we'll have to sit back and see. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
But I just want to say thank you again and again and again. I know I say thank you at every video, and I genuinely mean it. Um, uh, it was fun covering this fight, man. And, and uh, I look forward to doing it more. So anyways, man, Barbershop Conversations. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? No, Jared Hurd, congratulations. You deserve it. You, your team is exemplary. Jared Hurd, your character is exemplary. Uh, that whole team was exemplary, man. I, I saw them throughout the hotel and their Swift shirt. They carried themselves well. And, and, and I'm not talking about it from an elitist perspective. Like, they talked how they talked. They walked how they walked. And, and, and they had their swag. They had their confidence. The two days I was in the hotel or the, the Friday and Saturday I was in the hotel. And they did it their way. It, 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 it wasn't like put on your uniform and appease the white man. No, they was respectful in doing it the way that they want. They intended to do it their culture way. Uh, I, I love the Laura team. The same, I, I, I give the same compliment to the Laura team. They had their Laura sweats on, their Laura shirts on. It was just a great time, man. It, they had so many fans or the hotel was so small because, you know, in Hard Rock, it's a circular thing. So it felt like a college basketball, a college football game. You understand what I'm saying? Where you had, you had them interacting. It, it, it wasn't like we're going to go physically go blow for blow. It, it was it was jaw japping, but it wasn't nothing serious. It felt good. It was positive, and uh, it was good. Al Heyman, great job. Uh, Sam Watson and all the PBC staff, he did a great job. Honestly, the people who was in charge of media, Swanson Communications, you guys were awesome. It was just a good. It was overall. It was a well run. It, this was a well-run card, man. Like it was seamless and smooth, man. It was beautiful. Anyways, man, y'all don't y'all don't care about that shit. Y'all y'all care about the personalities of the fighters. <laughs> Barbershop conversations, but I I don't mean that. Literally. I just want to go to bed. I'm tired. Peace.